Welcome to Cruise Kibbits, where we give you all the advice that you didn't ask for. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cruise Kibbits. I am Kiki from Team Reese Travels. I am Siobhan from Parker's on the Go. And I am Cheryl, also known as Sig Cruiser. Yes. Welcome, lovely ladies. We are so excited for today's conversation because we got kind of a hot topic here today. Would you agree that it's a hot topic lately, ladies? I think so. I think it's pretty hot. <laughs> so today we are going to have a conversation about hair on cruise ships. Mm. So, of course, you can see if you're watching on YouTube that you see you have three lovely black women here that love to cruise. <laughs> and if you know anything about black women, you know that we don't play about our hair. And, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot that goes into play when you cruise in or vacation and in general about, you know, what am I going to do with my hair? What do you look for? How do I want to style? How much time and effort do I want it to put into caring for it? So I think today we're going to have a conversation around that. Uh, you guys ready to talk about it? Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Okay. So I'm going to start off. Um, just by, I want to get an understanding of both of you ladies' point of view when you're deciding to sail. And I'll start with, with Cheryl. Mm -hmm. um, when you're deciding to go on a sailing, how important to you is hair? Like how, how much thought do you put into what am I going to do with my hair? How am I going to style it? You know, how much effort am I going to put into it? Those kind of things. Okay. Well, so I'm going to say, of course, it's much easier now. But yes. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to go back to the days when I was sailing without locks. And at that time, now I've been, uh, I used to, of course, do the creamy crack back in the day when I was mm -hmm. growing up. And then I switched to uh, braids, micro braids. Then mm -hmm. I went natural and I was wearing like wig pieces and things like that. So when I started cruising in 2016 as a solo cruiser, I think at that time I was doing like, you know, wig pieces, so not full wigs. So it was, it was, it was like, it was like when you're planning an outfit, you're planning an outfit for your hair, <laughs> trying to figure out what, what pieces you need to bring or what wig and what wig style you're going to bring or how you're going to wear uh, your hair. So it's a, it's a big part of your outfit. It's a big part of planning, I, I think. So, yeah, it's it's very important to the cruise process. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, okay. Yes. What about you, Siobhan? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I absolutely agree. And luckily enough, I agree with Cheryl, especially since I've been locked. I've been locked about 15 months now. But when we first started cruising, I was not. And um it was a thing. It was a rush to make sure you could get an appointment before a cruise. And it was rushed to make sure that um, you had your hair just right. And if somebody couldn't do it, I got to figure out a way to do it myself. And I don't want to have to worry about it while I'm on this trip. And I think as a culture, that is a thing, not only on cruises, but just for us on vacation, because it does take a lot for us. It is something that is important to us. And our hair is a part of our identity and who we are as people. So um, we definitely, I think, feed a little bit more into um, how we feel about our hair while we're on vacation and, you know, how that makes us feel. So, uh, yeah, definitely before it was definitely a stressful part of packing for a cruise. And even Brandon said to me the other day, he was like, you used to worry about it so much. And now you're just like, oh, I, like, I don't have to stress it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, there is even also, I will say there's been some times where I even had some anxiety around it. And, and it's like, it is a big part of the planning process. Like Cheryl was saying, you want the hair to match, you know, whatever outfit. If I got, if I got a formal night outfit and I got, you know, a piece that is going around my neck and shoulders out, I need a hairstyle that's going to accommodate that, right? Yes. But I also need a hairstyle that I can get the hair off my neck when I'm outside in the heat. And yes. I also need a hairstyle that can flow and look nice and pretty on formal night. Like you just, there's a lot of different pieces to it. Um, and what I'll say now, it, I feel like it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. And I'm, I'm in this like 
transitional phase now where I'm trying to transition my hair from the creamy crack to natural. And so it's been a few months, but I still got a long way to go. But it also means I got to find something to do with my hair every time I go. And now because I want to be more mindful of my edges and how I'm treating my hair, I'm limiting braids and all the other things that I have done with hair. And I have done it all. <laughs> yes. But uh, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to know what to do and how to maintain it. And it is a not only an added mind thing, it's an added cost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's a cost that's associated with your trip. That, you know, a lot of people don't think about if a trip gets canceled and you get the money back for the trip, well, I already spent a bunch of money getting my hair done and nails done and all this stuff. So I'm, getting, I'm not getting that money back. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> but yeah, but I agree. So let me ask you this, Siobhan, too. Do you feel like transitioning to locks? You said it was like a year and a half ago, right? When you did that, mm -hmm. um, did that take a lot of the stress off? And do you feel like, do you ever wish that you had done it a long time ago? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You, um, you look like Sig feels the same way. <laughs> it wasn't even just in like vacationing. It was like in my everyday life, I struggled with my hair um, and just figuring out what to do with it. And that does transition over. And then, like I said, a lot of the times, you do, especially if you have insecurities, your hair is a part of your identity. And I had a lot. Um, so I mean, I remember in 2018, I cut all my hair off and it was the best thing that I ever did. I like my hair. I, I had a short hairstyle. I used to go to the barbershop and get cuts with the guys. And I was like in heaven because I did not have to worry about it. And it, it was not tied to the old Siobhan. Um, so for me being locking was a different transition, but it was a transition into not being scared of who I was and not having to tie my hair into my identity as well. So um, a lot of it, it goes a long way and hair should not tell a much of, as much of a story as it does in our society, but unfortunately it does. I mean, we hear all the time about people not only, um, you know, you see the memes about, I don't know if you've seen the TikToks where they're like, you could tell every time a black woman goes on vacation because everybody in the airport got braids. Like I've <laughs> seen that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, we know, like, we know what we, you know, we know who we are. We know what we want to do as far as our hair is concerned, but sometimes our identity is tied to it. And this is like the first time I've been like absolutely free of that stereotype of like being who I am and not having to worry about that being tied into what I do with my hair today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wish I did it a long time ago. It took me <laughs> I wish I hadn't shaved it off first before I did it, but you know, maybe that was my path to get into where I am now. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm guessing you feel the same way, Cheryl. It looked like you was doing a lot of nodding over there. <laughs> yes, and and you know, I before I uh, even did uh, the the locks, you know, I had micro braids, so I I, I think that was kind of like an introduction mm -hmm. to you know getting finding my way to locks, but I went the the, the micro braids. And then, you know, I just knew that I didn't want to go back to relaxers or anything. So that's when I started, you know, transitioning to full natural and uh, experimenting with wig pieces and things like that. And you have to think when you go, when you go on the cruise, especially when you're trying to go natural, well, you know, if you're wearing your hair straight one day, you know, yeah. And then it, it looks like you go, there's a, uh, a, a day that's high humidity, a day that you want to take a dip in the pool or the ocean, your hair is going to totally change. <laughs> so, yep. And then you want to go to formal night that night. So, <laughs> right. I mean, that's the whole experience. And then at home, okay, maybe you got a, a couple of quick fixes at home. You can take that hot iron comb. You know, even now they have now the electric ones. Mm. You know, I can do those and things you can do at home, but you can't do that on the ship. <laughs> 
So it's like, now you have to figure out, okay, if I want to spend the day at the beach with my natural hair, but I want to have straight hair or straighter hair when I go to a formal night to dinner, okay, what am I going to do? So yeah, yeah, definitely locks takes that, <laughs> takes yeah. the worry out of that. And it is, it's, uh, you know, low maintenance. I love being able to, you know, just spray oils in my hair and get up and shake, shake it off and, and go put it up in the ponytail, wear, wear down and it's, you know, it's not high maintenance. You know, I do love that uh, about lock. So I would recommend to everyone, just lock it up. Just lock it. You ladies look absolutely lovely with your well, locks. So it's, <laughs> girl, go ahead. Whip oh, your hair oh, back oh, and forth. I got to set free. You know what I mean? Like, okay. <laughs> And I, you know what? I've never, obviously my hair is not locked, but the times that I love my hair the most is when I had like faux locks because yeah. they were so versatile. I could style it however I wanted for elegant night. I could pull them up into a bun and maybe leave a few hanging out to give it an elegant look. Mm -hmm. I could tie it back in a ponytail if I wanted to. Like it was just a lot of things that I could do with it. That's, some, that's one of my favorite styles. But I want to go back to something that was said earlier because I think a lot of that anxiety and that, you know, worry that we talked about earlier is tied to if something does go wrong with our hair and we mm -hmm. don't have the right product and we don't have the right utensil, what are our options at that point? Because most of the cruises that I've been on, I've not seen an option for us for a Ooh. correction for Ooh. hair at all. You and mean so like maybe the spa? Salon? <laughs> You you're saying we can't use the salon. Mm. I'm not saying you can't use the salon. <laughs> I'm saying that I only trust. Listen, Jackie been doing my hair for <laughs> Jackie. Shout out to Jackie. Jackie. <laughs> that is like three people that can be in my head. And that and that's a, mm. another thing. We hadn't even touched on that, but trust. Mm -mm. With our hair is a big thing. Only certain people can do it, right? It's gonna be me, or it's gonna be one of them three. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the luxury of being able to just walk into the spa and say, "Hey, this is what I want," and be confident that we're gonna get what we want, and they will have the product that we need, and they will have the utensil that we need, and it will come out looking the way we need it to look. So, what are you guys' thoughts on that, Cheryl? You like you was about to say something? Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> even selective on land. So, yeah, of <laughs> so, uh, so imagine, you know, you're going on a ship, you're going to be, you're going to look even, you're going to be even more selective. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be looking at the products that have, you're going to be looking at uh, the people in the salon and you're going to be looking at their hair. You're going to, you're going to make judgments as to, you know, whether, you know, you feel comfortable enough mm -hmm. I'm taking care of your hair, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our, I think our hair is sensitive. Um, I, I think you have to know how to care, you know, for our hair. So we're not going to put our our hair in the hands of just anyone. I think so. Yep. I agree. And you know, the whole thing with that too. When you think about, you know, if if I don't have any options while I'm there and my hair something goes wrong with my hair and i don't have what i need and they don't have what i need yeah. how am i going to feel for the rest of my trip yeah. i was like i personally i'm going to be self-conscious about it yeah. like, siobhan do you think you would feel that way if you i mean now you're locked but say two three years ago before you had locks how what impact would that have on the rest of your sailing oh it would be huge um i know even the weird thing is even though i've been locked i had a time probably about six months ago where I couldn't get a retwist before I got on the ship. Mm -hmm. And y'all know I panicked and went on Amazon and brought a wig. Really? I did. I now, did. I don't remember seeing you wear a wig, so what I, did, I never wore it. I never okay. wore it. I had to figure it out, right? Because it's like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is me reverting back to everything I just freed myself from. So I had to figure it out and I did it and I figured it out and I was okay. But it was almost a, what happens if, what happens if, what happens if, and it was just like, 
nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. I care, but um, nobody cares. Like you're on vacation and you're going to enjoy yourself regardless, you know, if anybody cares or not. And it, that doesn't just go for us. It goes for the guys too. I mean, guys aren't going anywhere without getting a haircut. You know, you know, look, my husband don't really care. Um, mm -hmm. But the one cruise he did do that and he couldn't, like he just couldn't get into a, a barbershop before we left. He there was no appointments for some reason that cruise, and we got a nasty comment on our blog about that about him not having a haircut. And it's like guys are affected too. It's not even just us. Like you know, why do you care if my husband has a haircut or not? That's not affecting your view and experience. And if it is, please find another channel. <laughs> right. So, and that's um, yeah, I can see that. And guys are too. And you, we know guys, they are the same way when they go on vacation. They are in the barbershops. They make sure they got their wave brushes and their hair. You know, they, they take care of themselves the same way we do. So um, yeah. it's not even just a, a, a woman thing. It's a guy thing too. You know, they want to make sure that they take care of themselves and are presentable. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just something that's ingrained in us to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Agree, agree. Yep, yep. And I'm yeah. glad you mentioned about the comment too. First of all, ridiculous. Why would you even say that? But what I was gonna mention that kind of goes along with that is even though we like to say what other people do say doesn't matter, what they think doesn't matter, how much of our self-conscious is like Man, if they look at me the wrong way, they they looking at my hair. I know mm -hmm. it looks right. They look. I know they looking at my hair. I know. Yeah. Hey, I I'll be the first one to admit I am concerned with other because people think, hey, you ain't even care enough to get your hair done, go on vacation. <laughs> that's the kind of attitude people will take, and that's the attitude that person had towards Brandon, and you it know. Is. I getting a haircut. It is. And so some of that anxiety is tied to that too. And it's kind of sad. I'm I'm ready to be in that freeing period that y'all are in. <laughs> it's a lot of emotion, sad. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it's sad that we as people are doing that to each other. It's not even just a situation of, you know, somebody random said. It's we as people, I mean, because they literally said, we don't do that over here. We don't go anywhere without haircuts. Well, that's y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to tie my trip around whether or not I can afford to get a haircut this week or not, or I could get an appointment and then the appointment I could get was $75 for you to shave hair off my head. No, I'm not paying that. So it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's have the conversation about how important it is for us. Yes. But also let's not, let's not draw into a whole stereotype of, you know, we have to be this way. We don't have to be this way. Let people be free to be who they want to be. You know, if, if right. I don't want to get my hair retwisted before I go on a cruise, that's my mm -hmm. business. Yeah. If, you don't wanna, if nobody wants to get a sew in, that's their business. Mm -hmm. If you want to have braids down to your butt, that's your business. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> whatever you feel like you want to do, do it. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's so I about. have a question because I have a question that it's a question that I want to answer too. But <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so now how we we talked about the the perspectives of other people, but how much of it do you think it's us? Meaning, you know, we're focused on our hair, but somebody else may not even be looking at our hair, but it's just us in in our heads. So, do you think that happens? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I know that I hyper focus on it sometimes, uh -huh. and especially if I'm trying a style that I've never tried before. Mm -hmm. If I've never tried it before, mm -hmm. it means that I have never learned how to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And I'm on a ship. And that means y'all know I pack a lot anyway. But now I got to take every product that I could possibly need. <laughs> because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's gonna happen, and I need to be able to recover, which means I need all my stuff. So, <laughs> but I, I, I do. I, I can admit, I, I hyper focus on it sometimes. Yeah. What about you? Oh, I used to. Yes. Uh huh. Now I take a brush and some edge control. <laughs> <to keep it. laughs> Maybe three or four bobby pins. Maybe a hair tie. You know, I'm not over. <laughs> 
I'm not going to stress it, you know, because it's the freeing part of it. But mm -hmm. I used to, I'm, I'm the same way as Kiki. Like, I was like, you know what? What if, hence the point of going on Amazon and buying a wig because I was concerned about what other people were going to say about my hair. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I've been in, I've definitely been in the same boat, even with having the locks, because when I first got locked, this is, um, uh, right after, well, years after, you know, starting with my gluten issue, one of the effects of that was I lost a lot of hair mm -hmm. and my hair thinned out. And so then when I got locks, I wanted, you know, I got traditional size locks. But when everybody saw me, they were like, are those sister locks? I'm like, no, they're traditional. <laughs> <laughs> My hair was so thin and, and for the first couple of years that I had locks, I was self-conscious about, I love my locks, but I was self-conscious about them because they were so thin. And then, you know, eventually they started growing in. And I remember the first compliment that I got, you know, on, uh, you know, my locks, a, a girl walked up from me to me from behind and said, man, I want, I want locks like yours. And yeah, y'all don't know how that made me feel. <laughs> Because, you know, and I'm thinking, well, while I'm and at the same time, when she said that, I'm still thinking, man, my hair is so thin and everything. And, you know, everybody's looking at my hair and how thin it was. And, you know, she walked up and said, hey, I want to I want to start locks and I want mine to look like yours. And that that made me think, you know, while I'm sitting here putting my hair down or putting myself down, not that I, I was talking negative about my hair, but I was focused on what's wrong with it instead mm -hmm. of you know what's right mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. that and that kind of you know made me change i feel like yeah it's still thin but i focus on you know just having healthy hair you know uh making sure that it's healthy making sure that you know i'm doing the right things for it and taking care of it you know it's, it's i think it's some of it can be my own perspective so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I love that. I love that <laughs> somebody complimented you on it. It may make you feel because I can only imagine like having negative feelings about it, and then for somebody to just yeah. reinforce it. Uh -huh. Hey, you are beautiful. Your hair, your hair is envy. Like other people <laughs> want this, their hair to look mm -hmm. like this. Yes. And you know, it's, big. it's just another example of just be kind. You never know what a kind word can do mm -hmm. for someone. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now I have a question. We it's, it's a hot topic, right? So, it is hot. <laughs> Siobhan, what do you think cruise lines can do to be more inclusive of women of color on their ships when it comes to hair care? Let's talk about these spas. <laughs> Let's talk about these spas. I feel like um, a lot of, I think not only hiring people of color or people who are trained in doing ethnic hair could help, but just being more conscious that you are offering services that are not um, included in the masses. Mm -hmm. it, you know, a lot of the times when you do look at the services and you can go get a haircut or you can get your beard shaved or, you know, get your beard trimmed or stuff like that on the spots, even for, like I said, not only just for women, but for men. It's the same thing. Just like we don't trust anybody in our hair, men don't play with their barbers. So unless you know that, you know, the barber on the ship can do what my man back at home can do, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to trust it. So, mm -hmm. you know, the same way on land where it's something like, I don't know about where you guys are, but in North Carolina, you have to be, you have to go to school to be a natural hair care. Mm -hmm. yep. Braids to take care of natural yep. hair. You have to go to school and be certified in that. So to lock hair, you have to go to school for it. You have to have a license. So the same way that you should have to have the only, you should be able to offer those same services to people on cruise ships. You know, I, I went on a carnival ship on the Magic and got my nails done and they took more care. I feel like they took more care in that no drills, no nothing. They had to do everything, hand file everything. Yep. Like they take very much care in that. They have rules that they have to follow. You can do the same thing for hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. What about you, Cheryl? What do you think? 
I think uh, the same thing uh, I do on land when I look at salons and I'm looking them up on the internet and I look at the services they offer. So if even if it's a uh, salon that um, you know handles you know natural hair uh, or black hair, if I don't see you know services that are regarding lock maintenance, then I'm hesitant. <laughs> on on uh you know um you know trying to trying out that service so i would say like some of the offerings on their uh their, their service offerings if i see something that's catered to taking care of you know our natural hair then i'm more inclined to you know try out those services or to consider you know those services so mm -hmm. that could be something so. yeah yeah I, I will i mm -hmm. will give a kudos to disney though and I'm, I'm quite proud of Disney. Now, I don't know if they've extended this to their cruise ships, but if they have, you know, kudos to them. They are um, starting to train their godmothers, fair godmothers, in the Bibbidi Bobbidi boutiques to do ethnic hair. Oh, and that's, that's a huge deal for little girls. That is a huge deal. Uh -huh. yes. That is a huge deal because we have seen some horror stories. <laughs> In the past, when looking at some of the, um, just read even online and just mothers being concerned about, should I book the appointment? Are they going to know how to take care of my, mm -hmm. my children's hair? Um, mm -hmm. You know, so it is a huge thing. And them taking that step out and saying that we're going to actually make sure that our fairy godmothers are trained. They know how to handle your hair. You don't have to be concerned. They've listened to us as far as that is concerned, and they've actually taken a step in the positive direction. So kudos to Disney. Uh, kudos. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Big kudos for that. I love to hear that completely. Yes. Um, so I'll share, too, and I know you guys touched on it from the salon aspect, and I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly, but I want to go even a step further from that and say the cruise line, things that they can do the pamphlets that just align services are, are we represented in those do are there people there that look like me to the point that i may feel comfortable even going down there to take a look and see what you have mm -hmm. you know are there all cruise lines got shampoo and body wash in their showers right are the products mm -hmm. do the products work well for people of color like are they products that are going to help our skin are they shampoos that are going to work well on our hair are there conditioners that will work well on our hair a lot of that stuff is like the initial if if, if the first feel when you get into the room or even when you get on the ship is that i'm not represented here mm -hmm. I, i'm never going to show up without my own body wash mm -hmm. i'm never going to show up without my own products for my hair because i don't it don't look like I'm represented though. So I need to be prepared. That's the feeling that I get. So I think that even just changing some of that, the the visual around the the advertising, the the commercials, all of that plays into what is going to make me as a woman of color feel comfortable mm -hmm. that you are gonna have what I need for my hair on this ship. <laughs> so I mean that it was just so like, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That was strong because I, you know what, it's it's the honest and goodness truth because you know we can't just do all in one. You're not gonna yeah. put the same thing that I put on my body in my head. No, I'm not washing my hair with body wash. I'm just no. not gonna do it. Not so, doing it. It and is. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'll, probably the majority of us bring our own, all of yeah. our yeah. products mm -hmm. for everything. <laughs> and we are growing in numbers of how mm -hmm. we cruise. Like we are really getting out there and getting on board these ships and um, really showing a presence and starting mm -hmm. to show up. And I think that is something that the cruise lines probably need to start mm -hmm. looking at. It's even like, okay, it, yeah, maybe you can't put, you know, every all ethnic types of products in, in every room, but maybe have an offering of it mm -hmm. in the stores or the convenience mm -hmm. stores or something, maybe the most popular you know, products or some type of product, you know, just yes. in case you yes. have an emergency, <laughs> you know, you yes. need something, you know, just something that, you know, we can, uh, just an option, you know, for us that would, mm -hmm. that would go a long way. So, yep. What mm -hmm. if they had body butter instead of just lotion Ooh, in the world? Like, let me tell you, <laughs> that's a huge difference. 
I love me some body butter. You right. You sure right. Look, Everybody needs to get their body butter. <laughs> body butter, bottle oil, oil, something yeah. other than the lotion that's going to be gone. We in the Caribbean yeah. heat. That lotion yeah. ain't going to last. By the time I walk not. down the gangway, that lotion going to be gone. Gone. But mm-hmm. gone. Because y'all know that but, shower yeah, water no, is I, hard I, on our skin. Mm-hmm. On those cruise ships. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then oh. what I was going to say also. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen a few people talk about like on Virgin that they have only the overhead shower, that the mm-hmm. rain shower. Yes, I, they do. We're not doing that. Yeah, we're not doing. I don't care if my hair is braided from head to toe. I'm just not doing that because now I gotta wait for these braids uh-huh. to dry all dang on day because I done stood on. Uh huh. Oh, and the frizz is at the roots, girl. Then it's gonna start frizzing. See, that's a whole new thing. <laughs> Those are the kind of things that just you know yeah. you just. I have some of us at the table, but like this, like it, this was easy. Like, but yeah, just thinking about some of those things outside the box, not even just starting in the salon, but starting out, it starting the room, the first place we go to. Yeah, to the um, yeah, yeah. But ladies, I think this was a good conversation. I enjoyed it. Oh, um, this is a great I, conversation. We're going to move from hair to body wash, girl. We're moving on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on cruise kibbits. You have the right kind of lotion. <laughs> so I want to close with this. I'm gonna share real quick. I was watching a uh, and it kind of ties into what you said earlier, Siobhan. I was uh, going through TikTok like I always do, and I came across a video of a young lady. She was a creator who said that. And she cut her hair. In this video was a video of her cutting her hair and shaving it down. Um, And you could just see she was very selective in how she showed it. Um, Mm. She showed the start of her cutting it, but then it went to just clips of the hair like falling in the sink and you never saw the end product. Mm. Um, And she was saying how it was just tied to her releasing so many things from her life and so many she was she had been through a divorce. She had been through like some different types of things you know the life 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 and again mm-hmm. and she was cutting her hair and this was representing her cutting out all those situations from her life mm-hmm. and she never showed the way her hair looked in the end and all these people in the comments were saying why don't you show your hair we didn't even get to see the finished product we didn't get to see the finished product and she came back with another video and said because it was not about the finished product it was about the process mm-hmm. and so Ooh. i want to ask you ladies what would you say to someone, a woman of color, who wants to cruise but is concerned about their hair and just not really sure that cruising is going to work for them because they are so held up in their mind about their hair care while on board? Any advice or tips? That was strong. Um, <laughs> that, it was because um, I, I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of hit a nerve. I, I, I completely understand. Um, do what makes you comfortable and just know as comfortable as you are in your own skin, you have to be that confident that you, you can move forward. I, you know, I, I think that that's a tough one, uh, especially for us because, uh, you know, our hair, it means, you know, so much to us and a part, it's a part of our lives and what we do every day. But at the same time, I would say just like we say with, you know, uh, going out on a vacation or taking a vacation and, and not waiting on others to experience life, we have to find a way to not let our hair hold us back uh, from enjoying life and experiencing life. Uh, There comes a point where we're going to have to learn how to be comfortable in the hair that God blessed us with Amen. and be able to feel comfortable with it and live with it and not worry with every, what everybody thinks. I think that's a process that we have to go through because what we're, what we're dealing with is society. We, we, we may love our hair, but we have society telling us that, you know, in the corporate world that, you know, it's not appropriate. So those are the things that we're dealing with, you know, so we have to find a way to overcome, you know, those kinds of obstacles 
to enjoy life and hey, just not worry about what other people think. You know, I, I and I think it's going to be a process. So. Absolutely. I, I agree with both of you ladies. And I think that was so profound. I'm not even going to say nothing behind it. I think that's good words to close us out on. <laughs> because that whole thing about, you know, don't let it stop you. Don't let anything stop you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that says so much to me. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to just end it there. <laughs> we better, we got to have a kumbaya session. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> this will easily become an hour long podcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, Siobhan, can you tell everybody where they find cruise kits? Yeah, absolutely. So if you are looking for cruise kits, you can always comment underneath this video on YouTube or you can message Sid Cruiser, Parker's on the Go, Team Reese Travel on all of our social media platforms, or you can email us at cruisekibbits at gmail.com. That is cruisekibbits, K-I-B-I-T-Z at gmail.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys for this wonderful conversation. And Cheryl, you got anything you want to say? Child, let's call this podcast before we go to church. Okay, amen. Happy cruising, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>